The Star Forge was an ancient Rakatan artifact, powered by the dark side of the Force, which would inevitably corrupt any user after a prolonged period of use, and was said to be a machine of invincible might and a tool of unstoppable conquest. It was also central to the plot of Knights of the Old Republic, as it ultimately spells either the Republic's doom or liberation, depending on the player's moral proclivities. As such, I believe, perhaps more poignantly, that the original obtaining of the superweapon known as the Starforge represents Revan's greatest lie in the game, which perfectly encapsulates Revan's own journey from Jedi to Sith and then something more, arguably transcending both, and by contrast, showcasing the Jedi's own ultimate hypocrisy and failures. But to better understand this proposition, we must first go back to Ricarda Prime, also known as the Unknown World, where Revan's greatest lie began. During the events of the original KOTOR, we find out that when the Dark Lords Revan and Malak returned from unknown space, they sought out the superweapon known as the Starforge, a weapon of immeasurable power that promises their total dominion over the battered Republic. To obtain the superweapon, Revan met with two Rakadan village elders as the Starforge could only be accessed via the Ancients' Temple. And the only way into the temple was an ancient ritual, which the Rakatans knew. The first group of Rakatans followed their leader, the one who represented the dark side choice. Originally, after learning Rakatan and, according to them, using the Force to drive Basic into their skulls, the one then tells you that if you slaughter their opposing clan of elders, he will take their secrets from them and help you gain access to the temple. Revan then promises to do so. However, he betrays them and chooses a different path. Then Revan meets with the Council of the Elders. The Elders instead represent the light and seek to obtain peace. They originally bargained with Revan that they would indeed allow him access to the Temple of the Ancients on the proviso that he destroys the Star Forge. Revan initially agrees to these terms, however, he then turns heel and proceeds to rain destruction upon the galaxy with the very weapon he promised to destroy, betraying both of the Rakata and tribes, dark or light side regardless. This, however, encapsulates why Revan's lie made him arguably the most effective and lethal adversary that the galaxy had ever seen, and the reasons are manifold. First, if we deconstruct his first original choices, Revan chooses neither the light nor the dark, and instead lies to both Rakatan tribes because he knows his lie will bring him to his goal regardless of moral alignment. If he was a pure Sith, he may have slaughtered the Elders, then allied himself with the Once. If he were a Jedi, he would no doubt have sided with the Elders and destroyed the Starforge altruistically then and there without seeing the bigger picture. However, he chose neither as he was far more pragmatic. We later find out that the threat to the Republic was an unknown Sith Emperor who has literally consumed worlds, was nigh immortal, and a vast army. When Revan had realized the gravity of this threat to the Republic, he alone took it upon himself, the burden of destroying the Emperor or die trying, and this forced him to face many harsh realities. The first was that the dogma of the Jedi, their code they lived by, was woefully unequipped for the horrors of war. And if we analyze the first line of the code, it belies their failings. There is no emotion there is peace. Now that's a virtue the Jedi happily cling to despite the events of KOTOR in which they are surrounded by war, marred by inaction, and seemingly doomed to die in their enclave on Dantooine. Now, Revan first saw the truth of this in the previous war, when the Mandalorians all but took over the Republic while the Jedi all but stood and watched. The Jedi Code, as idealistic as it is, seems to be written for times of peace, not times of war, where action is demanded and even when abstaining from choosing a side, chooses a side for you whether you like it or not. Now one could argue that the Sith's own doctrine, starting with peace is a lie, there is only passion, is just as fallible an idea as the Jedi's. To which I agree, without peace there would be never ending conflict, and that in itself is unsustainable, and those who seek it are just as doomed as those who pretend that they can shirk off conflict when it's all around them. 
That's why I posit that both codes, Jedi and Sith alike, have been shown to be flawed. They are written in a vacuum, pretending that the light nor the dark exist in a galaxy that is forever seeking balance as the never-ending light and dark side are in an interplay. Whenever one tips too far, the other side will correct it. And this is why many philosophers, Jedi and Sith alike, hold Revan in high esteem, or reverence. When Revan fell to the dark side, Revan's former master, Kraya, questions if he actually fell or if he used the dark side as a tool to meet an end, as his fall was unfortunate but inevitable, yet still at the end of the day was a choice. Revan's choices were always his own. It was not teaching or circumstance or example, it was him. And there is something that the council may never understand, that perhaps Revan never fell. The difference between a fall and a sacrifice is sometimes difficult, but I feel that Revan understood that difference more than anyone knew. The galaxy would have fallen if Revan had not gone to war. Perhaps he became the Dark Lord out of necessity to prevent a greater evil. I do not believe the Jedi Council changed Revan as they claimed. They merely stripped away the surface and allowed the true self to emerge again, someone who was willing to wage war to save others. But that is my belief. And here lies the irony, the truth in Revan's lie. The Jedi turned their back on Revan and instead huddled helplessly in their enclave as the walls crumbled around them, even forsaking the residents of Dantooine as to not draw the ire of Darth Malak, all the while citing the Jedi Code. So you heard about them, did you? They've been harmless up till now. It's tragic that someone had to die before we took action. You have our leave to deal with the murdering Mandalorian raiders, should you encounter them. The Republic beat them years ago. Little groups have been roaming all over the place. They're pathetic. They're taking scraps when they should be taking worlds. With the Sith invasion, the Republic doesn't have the manpower to hunt them down. The Jedi are even worse off because Malak has been hunting them specifically. They're worried that he might even be supporting these raiders. So, don't want to face them directly. That puts us in a kind of hard situation. In doing so, their inaction could be argued as tantamount to killing those that they failed to protect, as they chose to protect outdated values and doctrine instead of life itself that they swore to serve. However, in the end, canonically, the Jedi did triumph, not through sheer force, but by change in themselves, ironically much as Revan had too. An acceptance of the reality of war, and in turn, breaking free of their doctrine when necessary. Much to the chagrin of some of their old school council members, the Jedi came to the conclusion that faced with an opportunity to win the war, they needed to lie. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. The council would not normally accept an adult for training, but this is a special case. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. When they captured an amnesiac Revan and turned him to their cause, regardless of his past transgressions or the horrors they'd previously vilified him for, they finally accepted that the sacrifices that the war had demanded, as Revan did, and what better champion to lead their new crusade against Darth Malak and his unstoppable Starforge than the man who would stop at nothing to achieve his goals. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Star Forge could lead you down an all too familiar path. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause, to use their own knowledge against them? Also worth noting is, the characters in the Knights of the Old Republic mirror the opening poem that we saw in this video by Jean Edmund Cyrus Rostand, which famously reads, Kill one man, and you're a murderer. To the Jedi who represented the light side, Revan was a murderer the moment he turned the other cheek to their teachings and killed Mandalorians in what they saw as an affront to their code. Now, in the middle, neither light nor dark, in the end stood Revan, the prodigal knight who represents the in-between. I've known both sides of the Force, light and dark. 
or kill millions of men and you were a conqueror. Revan knew what he had to become, a conqueror, to reshape the very galaxy itself to save it from its impending doom, perhaps sacrifice millions. But the ends ultimately justified the means if it meant to save trillions. Savior, conqueror, hero, villain, you are all things, Revan, and yet you are nothing. In the end, you belong to neither the light nor the darkness. You will forever stand alone. Now, as we later learn, Revan also saw the truth. During the events prior to Knights of the Old Republic and originally unseen in the original game, when Revan was turned to the dark side, he met the Sith Emperor and knew what he had to become a conqueror to stop him, the Sith Emperor, near immortal and infinite in his own resources, who sought to kill all life in the cosmos. But as the line reads about the Sith Emperor, kill them all and you're a god. The circle closes. The end begins. My life spans millennia. Legions have risen to test me. If you kill everyone in the galaxy, you'll be the emperor of nothing. What's the point of all this? You discern a fraction of reality. Beyond these stars exist other galaxies, other worlds, other beings. I will experience or ignore them as I wish. I will spend eternity becoming everything. A farmer, an artist, a simple man. When the last living thing in the universe finally dies, I will enjoy peace and wait for the cycle to begin again. I've saved every world you tried to destroy. You can't win. My ascendance is inevitable. A day, a year, a millennium, it matters not. I hold the patience of stone and the will of stars. Your striving is insignificant. Let your death be the same. 